What's Ashton? And it is John. We're up sub sandwiches back with another reaction video. In today's video, we're going to be reacting to Jefferson and the Barbary Pirates, past as present, two thousand and nine, by the channel Jeff. 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 <laughs> Jeff Hicks. Yes, go and subscribe. The link will be down below in the description if you enjoy this content. Very important to support the channels that you love. This was a suggestion from Jim. Um, Jim, thank you so is this much. His channel. I don't think so. This is a video explaining America's involvement in the Islamic slave trade. Good follow up on the video. White guilt, 15 million European slaves. Video you guys just watched. Um, you guys can also help support the channel. Click on that link down below in the description. If you throw it down through stream labs, I'm going to let you pick one of the next videos that we react to. Just keep it under 10 minutes. Include video link, title, and email. Thank God. Okay. Just run out of air sometimes doing that. And yeah, let's get to it. Oh, I said, I thought his name was Jim. Or I thought the channel name was Jim. For some reason. No, that was the, the, the I suggestor's know. name. I know. Past is present. <sighs> True that. Pirates stalked the seas again, seizing ships and holding cargoes and crews hostage. Strange as it seems, the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps were forged over two centuries ago to fight pirates. Really? For hundreds of years, the Barbary pirates, or Corsairs, terrorized the Mediterranean Sea. They sailed from ports along the North African coast taking their name from the Barbary states of Tripoli, Tunis, Algiers, and Morocco. The Muslim pirates sided with the Ottoman Turks against Christian Europe. They preyed on merchant vessels, attacking ships and imprisoning their crews. If no one ransomed captive sailors, the Corsairs enslaved them at hard labor. Barbary pirates raided as far away as England and Iceland, kidnapping villagers to sell in African and Ottoman slave markets. Sometimes European governments fought the pirates. More often, they paid them bribes, called tribute, to leave their ships alone. Wow. But across the Atlantic, a new nation was forming that would challenge the Barbary Corsairs. After Americans threw off British rule, their merchant ships no longer had Royal Navy protection. The Corsairs began to prey on American vessels bound for Mediterranean ports. For the new nation to survive, Fools. its goods had to reach market. The U.S. had to protect its commercial fleet. Understandable. Fresh this is really cool because I didn't understand why, well, I didn't, not that I understand, I didn't know what formed what is the Navy today, you know? Like, what was the reason for it back in the past that it originally formed? And this is never talked about either. Like, this is such a brief, like, moment like in history lot, books. There's a lot that's not talked about. I know. It's like they just don't go into this stuff. Mm -hmm. From British occupation, Americans distrusted the idea of a national military. Many of the founding fathers wanted a Navy only strong enough to protect American shores. With few warships, the U.S. simply couldn't fight the pirates. In 1784, Congress agreed to spend $80,000 to bribe the Barbary Corsairs. To make the deal, Thomas Jefferson and John Adams sailed to England. In London, the envoys asked Tripoli's ambassador what gave the Barbary states the right to seize American ships and crews. It was the duty of all believers to make war against the unbelievers, the ambassador replied. Any Muslim slain in battle was sure to go to paradise. But he promised them that payments to Tripoli would guarantee safe passage. So America too. That almost makes no sense because they're saying it's part of like their thought process that you know if you're not with them you're against them as far as their faith. But yet if you give them money they drop their faith and don't care and then just go for them. I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. oh, if there's money involved. Which is like tribute. <laughs> right. <laughs> The Corsairs released American captives and agreed to let American ships be. But the attacks continued. As Americans began to lose patience, 
their leaders debated what to do. Jefferson argued for a stronger navy. It will be more easy to raise ships and men to fight these pirates into reason, he wrote, than money to bribe them. John Adams disagreed. We ought not fight them at all, he said, unless we determine to fight them forever. America resisted a military buildup until bribes to the pirates grew to almost 20% of the national budget. Damn, that's and still ridiculous. American sailors suffered in Barbary prisons. The country's outlook hardened. Congress decided America needed a force that could defend its trade on the world's oceans. In 1794, President George Washington authorized construction of six frigates, long-range attack vessels, fast and well-armed. Each would carry U.S. Marines, a force modeled on British troops stationed aboard warships. Now America would have a fighting navy. There you go. This is badass. Uh -huh. In 1801, Jefferson became president. Tripoli immediately tested him. Its ruler, Pasha Yusuf Karamanli, demanded more tribute. When and Jefferson refused, the, the Pasha budget. declared war. Only Congress could send Americans into combat. But on his own, President Jefferson ordered U.S. warships to the Mediterranean. You going to declare After war the frigate America? sailed, he revealed what he'd done. That's never worked out in history. Mm -mm. The Vietnam, style of the brutal. demand admitted but one answer, Jefferson told Congress. I sent a small squadron of frigates into the Mediterranean. At first, the U.S. Navy fared badly. Corsairs took the USS Philadelphia, imprisoning her crew and sailing the captured frigate to Tripoli. At home, critics savaged Jefferson's foreign adventure. He stayed the course. A turning point came... It's kind of one of those things where back in the day they probably didn't realize what was going on, but there's like... You know, if you're a pirate, you're really just trying to be... I mean, greed is the main thing. You're just trying to take what somebody else has. True, That's the yeah. whole like, aspect of thievery. So you do got to stand up against something that's like tyrannic like that and work together because that's kind of an evil to be honest. Like that greed is evil. Yeah. So to stand up against it instead of just paying them off, that's the the moralist thing to do. Morales or honorable. In 1804, in a night raid led by Lieutenant Stephen Decatur, Navy commandos blew up Philadelphia. U.S. warships bombarded Tripoli wrecking her fortifications. Still, Karamanli refused to release his American captives. After a year of fruitless negotiation, the U.S. took action again. William Eaton, American consul to Tunis, assembled a small force of Marines and mercenaries. In April 1805, Eaton marched his troops from Egypt across 500 miles of desert Catch the Pasha by I had no idea about any of this. The Marines recruited the Pasha's enemies, including his brother, then invaded Tripoli. To stay in power, Pasha Yusuf signed a treaty releasing American hostages and promising to end attacks on American ships. The hard line seemed to work. Jefferson told Congress, the states on the Barbary Coast seem generally disposed at present to respect our peace and friendship. But the Corsairs had not ended their attacks. And in 1815, Commodore Stephen Decatur led American fighting men to victory in a second war against the Barbary pirates. This time, the raids stopped for good. The pirate kingdoms were beaten, and a new maritime power had emerged. President James Madison declared, as peace is better than war, war is better than tribute. The United States, while they wish for war with no nation, will buy peace with none. Yes. Today's pirates terrorized the seas as the Barbary Corsairs did long ago. With modern weapons and speedboats, they take prizes as large as oil tankers, demanding millions to ransom cargo and crews. Wow. Somali outlaws have made the seas off the Horn of Africa the most dangerous in the world. Waters through which 30% of the world's oil must pass to reach market. Damn. To stop the attacks, 
A coalition that includes the United States has formed an international task force to patrol the area. And two centuries after American sailors and Marines first made their name fighting the Barbary Corsairs, they face a new generation of pirates uh -oh. on the high seas. Strange as it seems. Past is present. That was an awesome video. Oh my god. It's not over yet either. Get like a minute left. But I think that's actually it, yeah. There it is, guys. Go and subscribe to the channel. That is Jeff Hicks. If you like that video, it's very important to support the channels that you love. I didn't know about any of that, but it was all just badass. And yeah, there is still conflict going on over there. It just didn't end, but it's really died down from what that right. looked like. You know, Way it's down. barely anything compared to that. Um, but that's really cool. Like to think back then, because get a lot of pride in America because you're American. You know, like everything that America's went through to be what it is. Mm -hmm. The fact that they even had conflict over there at that time i didn't know i thought after kind of like everything with england happened that they kind of just cooled down and didn't go anywhere that was it that's what i was taught to believe they didn't touch up on anything else but knowing that there's this huge piece right here and what formed the navy it, it's cool you got a lot more pride you know because mm -hmm. they just were well capturing people and holding them hostage and then taking bribes and like pretty much bleeding money out of the states that's just like a terrible thing in any form even in today right. and then to go and fight against it you gotta have, you gotta have pride now, i'm surprised for damn sure. i'm surprised that more of this isn't talked about in our history books i know because that was like super interesting right. like they didn't go over any of that it's like yeah. come on that's what sticks is when you can interest people in yeah. the story you know that's what makes them remember it and keep that knowledge um like i said before guys go like comment share and subscribe to the channel that is jeff hicks very important to support the channels that you love Peace out. This was posted on September 9th. Wait. Oh, never mind. Sorry. 9-11. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking yeah. September 9 of 11. It just was a funny number, so. It's like the opposite, though. It is, but it's September 9 of 11. Yes. So 9-11. Right. Yeah, I know. I, I was confused. Like, oh, my God, that isn't, like, the anniversary. I'm like, wait, no, it's not. That's a dumb thing for me to say. Mm -hmm. Peace out, guys. Bye.